G'day, my name's Adam Hills. Welcome to Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show that went and spoiled it all by saying something stupid like, your sister's kind of hot. Our two team captains each and every week are the God of Thunder, Alan Bro, and the goddess on the mountaintop, Miff Warhurst. <laughs> Alan's first guest tonight is an actor, writer, director and Gold Logie winner who says his guilty pleasure is Tiny Tim. <laughs> He's the first person to say that since Tiny Tim. Please welcome John Wood. <laughs> Alan's second team member is a comedian and writer who released a book about her family life called All That Happened at Number 26. It sold so well she's now working on the follow-up. If you think we were bad, wait till you hear about the freaks at 28. Welcome back, Denise Scott. <laughs> Miss first guest tonight has been a busker in Europe, the star of an Italian rock opera, a New York video artist and an ARIA nominee in the 90s for her songs Coma, Lay Down and Be Firm With Me. She's four guests for the price of one. She's Max Sharam. <laughs> and Miss final guest tonight is an internationally acclaimed Scottish comedian who is the second person in the boy family to be named after a song. He follows on from his sister, Rhinestone Cow. Welcome back, Danny Boy. <laughs> Uh, now, before we do start the show, I want to uh, show Max's uh, video for the song Coma, <gasps> which was, was 1994, I believe, was a massive hit. Yeah, I'm coming around. Now, Max, I want to go through the lyrics of this song just for a second. I live like I live in a coma. I smoke like an iron lung. I never go out in the daylight. I don't see much sun. Mm -hmm. I know that you've got a new girlfriend. Honey. Honey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it goes on to say, I'm coming around, better pull your blinds down. Mm -hmm. It's basically a song about being a stalker, is it? Yes. <laughs> cool. Right. It could be just um, an unannounced visit. That's just called a, a drop-in. It sounds a bit worse than a drop-in, though. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the line, better pull your blinds down. <laughs> yeah. well, she's something. giving the person warning. I mean, it's... You're a polite stalker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but spinning around in what appeared to be a car park is not the best place to give people a warning of being popping around, <laughs> is it? <laughs> You're so anti-stalking and everything, you lot. Oh, no, I don't... I, you know, I'm Alan's not... quite pro-stalking. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't encourage it. Well, you know, not publicly. Well, people don't encourage it in him. No, no, they don't <laughs> encourage it in me. But And it's also difficult to be a stalker when you're my size. Mm. Uh... I reckon the your compact folk get away with stalking much better. <laughs> in that time, mm. did you have trouble finding a partner? No, quite the contrary, Adam. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, men love to feel wanted, don't you? Yeah. Not in a wanted sign yeah. sort of way. <laughs> <laughs> now, we should also point out at this point, uh, John has quite the musical background as well. Do I? Are you a triple threat? Uh... <laughs> Which means singing, dancing and acting? Oh, well, I'm not very good at any of them, but, uh, yeah, but I, have, I have been in musicals. I've done a couple. I did chess back in the, you know, the early 90s. I've recently played Doolittle in My Fair Lady with Richard E. Grant. Right. I did a country and western musical called King of Country at the Playbox, which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Nobody came. <laughs> did, anybody here, did anybody here come? No. 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 Who, who did you play? I played a guy named Chucky Fowler. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a musical. Were you? Yes. Which one? I was in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Did you play the coat? I did play the coat. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. I've seen you singing Elvis Presley songs at karaoke. You probably have, Adam, yeah. That is pretty much your favourite. Well, I entered an Elvis impersonating contest when I was about eight. But the thing was, you know, I don't know if you know the song Teddy Bear, but there's a bit right at the end that goes like, really deep. Oh, well, oh, you better let me be your loving teddy bear. Put a chain around my neck and leave me anywhere. Oh, let me be. Yo, <laughs> and, uh, people thought I was having a fit. <laughs> <laughs> and I just had to do the old Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Alan and Miff will pick a topic. Everybody can be quizzed on it. Your choices tonight are hardcore, talent shows, classical music, and hits with English as a second language. Uh, Alan, you can pick the first topic tonight. Well, I think we'll have hits with uh, English as a second language, please. Uh, indeed, Miff. Oh, um, talent shows. Uh, we'll start with uh, English as a second language. Everyone on your buzzers? Let's play Speaks and Specs. First question for one point. Fluent in Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and English. <laughs> yes? David Beckham. I would say that was correct. I believe he does have English as a second language too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, I'll start the question again. Fluent in Spanish, Portuguese, Italian and English, pop songstress Shakira was born where? <laughs> Yes. I think she's from... Oh, she's from South America somewhere. Brazil, Brazil. sounds good. Brazil sounds right. Brazil. No! This side? Uh, Colac? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Argentina. 
Uh, no, the correct answer was Columbia. Oh! oh. Of course! In fact, Shakira is the highest selling Colombian artist of all time. Though not the highest selling Colombian product of all time. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Adam. <laughs> uh, coffee. Coffee. Oh, of coffee. course. Yeah. Mm. I shared a flat once with an Argentinian Beatles tribute band. <laughs> it's true. You know, like when sometimes when Spanish and Italian people talk, they put an extra proposition in where it shouldn't be. Yeah. But I'd be lying in bed and I'd hear the kind of. Lucy, she's in the sky with the diamonds. <laughs> oh. Crucified every single Beatles song I ever heard. Next question. Have a listen to these two English language hits from the same Dutch band and name the songs. Yes. Um, green bag, um, little green bag. Yes, little green bag was one of the songs. Um, and the first one, Paula Paloma, maybe mm. Blanca, whatever. It is. <laughs> the correct answer was Paloma Blanca. I believe oh, the only two words you said. Paloma. So we have two points. That was the George Baker selection with Paloma Blanca and Little Green Bag. Little Green Bag was featured on the soundtrack for the Quentin Tarantino film Reservoir Dogs. If you're wondering what kind of edgy band would provide a song for such a brutal film, here's what the George Baker selection looked like. <laughs> yeah, that's right, people. That's Reservoir Dags. Wow. Nice. Finally, for three points, look at these three renowned international musicians. Name each of their countries of origin. They are Harpo, Jose Gonzalez and Nina Cherry. <laughs> Yes, Smith. Nina Cherry lives in England, but I think she was born in Sweden. Correct. Jose Gonzalez is of Spanish origin, but he's also in Sweden. Correct. And Harpo, I would assume Sweden. Uh, three <laughs> points out of three, <laughs> Miff. Nice. Nice. Talent shows. All right. The first question for one point. Kelly Clarkson was the winner of which? Yes. American Idol. Yes, it was. Well done, Alan. For two points, listen to this grab. I need the Australian star singing and the Australian pop show on which she kickstarted her career. Yes. Helen Reddy on the Pot of Gold or No New Faces or. It was definitely Helen Reddy. Bandstand. Yes, two points. Well played, Max. Uh, three points on the line for your final question. Hosted by Johnny Young, Young Talent Time ran from 1971 to 1989. Name... Yes? 16 years. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fault him. You can, I'm pretty sure that was 18. <laughs> <laughs> the question is... Damn it! <laughs> name three members uh, of the original... Yes? Deborah Byrne. Deborah Byrne. Yes. Um, what about... Jamie you know, Redfern. Yes. yes. And the girl um, with the sort of ringlets, Jane, Janie, Janie... Um, Jane, yes, Jane, it is. Jane, um, just give me the first letter. Come on, Adam, I haven't answered a question in a year. <laughs> Please. <laughs> you know. Anyone on this side know? Jane... Oh. 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 Jane Scarly. Jane Thank you, Scully. Miff. Miff gets a point in there. Yeah. Yes, she's been on the show. Yes, she's been on the show. At the end of the first round, the scores are Alan John Denise on three points, Miff Max Danny in front, eight points. Oh. Teams have to buzz in and identify the tunes being performed live in the studio. Tonight, your songs are being played on the Hammond B3 organ by Tim Neal. Hello, sir. Song one, please, Tim. Yes, it is. Desperado yeah. by the Eagles. Yeah. All right, next song, please. Tim. No Woman, No Cry. No Woman, No Cry. Bob Marley. Yes, it is, man. Uh, next song, please. Mm. Yes. Oh. Piano Man. Piano Man. Oh. Yeah. Piano Man, Billy Joel. Yes. <laughs> next song, please. Yes. 
I Can't Stand the Rain. Yes, it is, by oh. Anne Peebles, covered by many people. And final song, please. Tiffany's organ last night. <laughs> 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 oh, gentlemen, Tim Neal yeah. and the Heaven's D3 organ. At the end of that round, the scores are Alan, John, Denise have caught up to seven points, two behind Miff Max Danny, nine points. Oh. <laughs> uh, each team will be given three artists and three interesting facts. You have to match the artist to the fact. Miff, Max and Danny, your artists are flamboyant crocodile rocker Elton John, the man that made the mullet sexy, Rod Stewart, and middle of the roader Peter Frampton. You have to match them to the bands they almost fronted, which are the Rolling Stones, the Kinks and the Spencer Davis Group. Elton John, Rod Stewart, Peter Frampton, almost fronted which of those bands? Rock and Rod could pretty much front, well, any of them because he's just awesome. Have you ever That's heard? my personal taste. Have you ever heard of the Spencer Davis? No, group? I've never heard of them. Mm -hmm. I think one of their massive hits was uh, "Give Me Some Lovin'." Mm -hmm. Give me some lovin'. Oh. Right. I did a gig at the uh, British Embassy recently in Paris, and I had my own footman for the weekend, which was kind of, you know, a bit awkward. You're going up. Oh, it was like more swan on toast and oh. stuff. And then um, I, I was asking him, because he'd had so many people in through the embassy, and I saw, I was constantly, I wanted to know. I said, what was Diana like? He's very diplomatic, so I, she was a lovely, lovely lady. I said, come on, you must have some scandal. I can't say anything, sir. And I said, come on, what was, what was Bush like? He's a bit of an idiot, right? And he's going, no, I, 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 charming man, like, I can't say anything. And then I said, oh, come on, who was the worst person you've ever had at the embassy? Expecting him to be diplomatic, and he just leaned in and went, Elton John, sir. <laughs> 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 I think he's the Stones. I think it's quite a high-profile one. He went mm, for the really? Stones. Yes. And I think uh, Rod Stewart, he was, went for the You the can't kinks. tell by their haircuts if they're Scottish or not? Yeah, well, actually, it's, it's more the pale ginger skin colour <laughs> <laughs> indicate where the Rod Stewart's from Scotland. OK, so we've got Rod with the Kinks and Elton with the Rolling Stones. What do you, what do you think, Max? Well, I'm inclined to think that Elton would have been with the Spencer Davis group, just going on the name alone. It's far more arty and, and gay, isn't it? <laughs> the Kinks isn't a gay name? <laughs> I can't remember what we got to. Rock and Rod with the Kinks. I'm going to go with you on that one. It's Elton um, with the Stones. Elton with the Stones, because that sounds so ludicrous. I, yeah. I can't imagine that it could be true. Mm hmm And Frampton? Peter Frampton with the Spencer Davis Group. You got one right. Oh. Elton John tried out for the Spencer Davis Group. I was so correct. Max would have been correct, correct there. Oh, yeah. Rod Stewart yeah. did try out for the, a band that became the Kinks. Uh, and I would have said that too. Peter Frampton wanted to be a Rolling Stone. Oh. Alan, John, Denise, yep. your stars are Everlasting Aussie Rockers ACDC, yep. Reggae icon Bob Marley, mm. and Paul McCartney's better half, John Lennon. You have to match them to the city that has a street named after them. OK. New York City, yeah. Madrid, mm. and Liverpool. Well, oh. I think the Liverpool's trying to throw us off because yes. immediately you would go John Lennon with Liverpool, but, oh, no. I believe John Lennon is with New York. Yes, I do I too. Because I believe the street is quite near where he may have been killed. OK. Are you happy see... with that? I was about no, to call you it. Tom. <laughs> but that's going back. Oh, my office. <laughs> 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 really? You always... yes. Is that right with you, Tom? That's right. No, that's fine. Did you get that a lot? Occasionally. Not usually from people I know as well as Denise. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. For some reason, ACDC in Madrid Seem... That's true because that's um... Milan you're thinking of. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. I think so it's Madrid. All we've got to do now is match up Bob Marley to well, Liverpool, and why? Well, Bob Marley was a huge soccer fan, 
Um, and that would be one of the reasons um, that uh, he would have a street named after him in Liverpool, where they're just mad for soccer. For goodness sake, the reason is that they're the only two left. <laughs> what else could it be? So, you've gone ACDC Madrid, yeah. Bob Marley Liverpool, yeah. and John Lennon New York City. Yeah, that's what we're going with. All right, I can tell you, you also got one right oh, out of the three. Yeah. The oh. answers are ACDC have Kaya de ACDC in Madrid. Oh, OK. John Lennon Drive is actually in Liverpool. Oh. Oh, no, That's how could so it be so obvious yes. and yet right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Bob Marley Boulevard is actually in Brooklyn in New York City, and it looks like this. Is that... Oh. <laughs> yeah, I see what you've done yeah, there. Yeah, if you look very carefully, Michael Phelps is in the background. <laughs> yeah. Now, out of all the bands that we mentioned there, John, you've actually seen the majority of those live in concert. Rolling Quite Stones, yeah. Bob Marley... The Beatles you saw, that was one of your first concerts ever, Yeah, The Beatles was the first real concert I ever went to, but the story behind that, it was that my, my mother was actually, uh, she used to shop at S.E. Dickens in Ringwood, and uh, they were actually giving away free tickets to the Beatles concert because they weren't selling. So Mum bought, you know, whatever the other groceries were, and that entitled to enough for two tickets, and so my now wife and I went to see them. You saw the Stones, though, as well, didn't you? The I Rolling saw the Rolling Stones in one of their early the Palais, tours. yeah. Right. The Palais in St Kilda. So the funny thing about the concert was that Roy Orbison was the second billing on, uh, on the concert, and he came on and did all those famous Roy Orbison songs and then he'd finish and they, everybody in the audience you know, would clap because they knew the Stones were going to come on next and the, the applause was enormous. So Roy would come back out and do an encore. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody go, they put up with it for a couple of times and then he'd go off and then everybody would clap like, man, when he came back out the third time people started booing. <laughs> there are certain bands that you want to see before you die and to be able to say, I saw the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, Bob Marley, Roy Orbison. The Beatles. Yeah, but I'm very old now and I'm going to die a lot sooner than you, so, you know, I had to fit it in somewhere back but In then. years to come, no one's going to look back at me, in, you know, when I'm in a nursing home and go, really, Grandad? You saw Robert Palmer, Huey Lewis in the news and Dave Dobbin in the Herbs? Was it with the original Herbs? I just saw uh, Nirvana back at Strathclyde University in Glasgow in 1993 and it was, uh, it was £3 to get in. So on the way up, on the way in the stairwell, this student handed me a strange-looking cigarette, and I took a, a suck of this, and uh, I ended up in a Nirvana concert. I don't remember anything other than throwing up in the toilet oh. to smells like Teen Spirit. <laughs> That's all I remember about the concert. Wow. So people go, "Oh, you saw Nirvana?" I go, "Well, I heard them from the toilet." Oh. <laughs> yeah. I was travelling by myself in France, and I ended up at a rock concert at a French castle. And same thing, you know, cigarette experience. And um, I had my tent to pitch after the concert. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and of course, I couldn't pitch the tent. And so this couple asked me, um, do I want to come and sleep in their tent with them? And I'm like, sure. And um, <laughs> well, I never thought I had... these things happened until it happened to yeah. me. Yeah. So I get it, and that's fine. And then this couple, of course, start having full on oh, sex, no. you know, oh. next to me. Look, I felt awkward. I was there in my walking boots and my, you know. <laughs> My khaki army pants. My, uh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm lying there thinking, oh, this is very awkward. And then suddenly the tent flaps open and there was this huge camera going, flash, 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 taking photos of the couple and me going... <laughs> so somewhere in France there's this, these photos of me going... and the couple next door having sex. I was expecting the couple to be a... A famous, uh, you know, oh, duo. Were they I French? disappointed you? A little bit. Oh, it was Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say that. Oh. After that round, the scores are... <laughs> Alan, John, Denise are on eight points. Myth, Max, Danny still in front. Ten points. <laughs> One member of each team will be singing well-known songs using the words of an unrelated piece of text. Your teammates have to identify those songs. John, you'll be singing first for Alan and Denise, and you'll be substituting your lyrics from Staying Hard, the only exercise book you'll ever need. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Wood. Yay! Okay. I am 37 years old and I sit at a desk to make my living. I smoke black cigars from Brazil. Uh. 
Your yes. business is important to us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That'll be your girl from Ipanema. It most certainly will be your girl from Ipanema. The Boston Over Classic. Thank you. At the back of this book, along with a few idiosyncratic diet tips, is a chart naming the muscles you will be concerned and telling you where they are located. There are over 600 uh, muscles in the... Oh, that's right, 66. Yes, it is. Oh. Oh. Final song, please, John. I believe in enjoying all kinds <laughs> of food and I love eating and drinking as much as anyone I know. But you can eat. Uh, yes. Oh, it be lovely. Yes, Thank it is you. from My Fair Lady. Three points out of three. John Wood. <laughs> Excellent work, sir. Next, you'll be singing for Miff and Danny, and you'll be taking your lyrics from Home Building and Maintenance Problems by Bob Ryan, the ABC commentator on homes and building. That's your book. Uh, those are your songs. Don't show your teammates. Ladies and gentlemen, Max Sharan. Okay, team. Avoid contact with the skin and eyes. This cup of sulfate is toxic. Substance care should be taken to avoid eye contact. Um. When using it on your roof, use a face mask to avoid inhalation. If you have a rainwater tank connected to the gutters, disconnect the feeder pipe. Uh. Denise? Jolene. Jolene, yes, it is. Jolene oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And next song, please, Max. Bricks are beset by a number of standing agents. Yes. Close to you. Close, Close to you by the carpenters. Yes, thank you, Danny. Final song, please, Max. In a survey into building faults, the CSIRO found that badly cured concrete. Yeah. It's fake plastic trees. Yes, it is fake plastic trees by Radiohead. Hey, you have a match around. All right, at the end of that round, Miff, Max, Danny are on 12 points. Ooh. Denise, on her own, is on 12 points. <laughs> Teams, hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. After Axiom, Glenn Shorrock had success in the mid-70s with... Yes? Little River Band. Yes, it was. Well done, Myth. Beethoven originally dedicated his Eroica Symphony to which military leader? Napoleon. Napoleon. Yes, it was. Which number symphony is it? Yes? Eight. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Give or take five. <laughs> Have a listen to this. Name the song. Goldfinger. By Shirley Bassey. Well done. Yeah. You even said that in a Sean Connery accent. I sure did. <laughs> the Tourists were an early incarnation of which 80s British supergroup? Eurythmics. The Eurythmics well is the correct answer. <laughs> Complete this Michael Jackson song. Don't stop. Or Do I'll touch your children. <laughs> Until you get enough was the answer I was looking for. <laughs> what planet is Ziggy Stardust band of a... Yes? Mars. Mars. Chicken genius Sanders and Elvis's manager Tom Parker. Colonel. Yes. And finally, which one was the genuine army colonel? Not Tom Parker. So, Colonel Sanders, you're saying? Colonel Sanders. I'm going to go with Colonel Sanders. No, neither of them are. Oh. Really? I've always believed he was something. You really thought Colonel Sanders fought in a war? <laughs> and there's a war against the chicken! <laughs> Continues to win it. <laughs> At the end of the show, the final scores were Alan John Denise ended up with 13 points. Myth Max Danny won the day. Woo! 18 points. Yeah! Would you please thank all our guests for tonight's show? John Wood, Denise Scott, Max Sharam, and Danny Boy. Yeah! And of course our two team captains, Alan Bro and Myth Warhurst. Now, earlier in tonight's show, we touched on the topic of talent shows. So tonight, we'd like to leave you with a clip from an ABC talent show from 1978 called Quest and a performance by the one and only Joseph Fermano. Thanks for watching Spicks and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia. <laughs>